This doublet lens has a diameter of 24 centimeters. That's nine and a half inches. One lens is flint and diverging. The second, crown and converging. Each of the four surfaces are ground to a different radius of curvature. The lens pair is set at a pre-calculated spacing. Not all lenses coming from Fraunhofer's workshop were large. Nor did he confine himself to the production of lenses. He designed entire optical instruments. This is one of his achromatic microscopes. Such instruments were available for sale from the firm at which all his work was done and in which he became one of the partners. This is one of their theodolites. This pocket-sized nesting telescope for terrestrial use, for example, as an opera glass, was engraved by Fraunhofer and presented to a friend. During his brief lifetime, however, he reached his greatest fame for the astronomical telescopes he made. The tube is about 14 feet long. Everything in this telescope was designed by Fraunhofer, the lenses as well as the mount. The axle is set precisely parallel to the axis of the Earth. With this wheel and protractor, the optic axis of the telescope can be set to the elevation of a star above the horizon, and the elevation can be measured with precision. The polar axis is driven via gears by a self-regulating gravity clock. So, the telescope can follow a star once in the intersection of the crosshairs of the eyepiece, a star stayed there for hours, even at high magnification. The planet Neptune was discovered through this telescope. A telescope of similar dimensions was sent by Fraunhofer and his firm to Wilhelm Struve, a great astronomer who worked in Russia. Through Struve's work, it became the most famous telescope of the time. It is not known whether it still exists. Fraunhofer died in the year 1826, when he was 39 years old. At that time, he was designing even larger telescopes. In the year 1847, a large refracting telescope, built in Munich by Fraunhofer's successors in the same firm, was sent to Cambridge, Massachusetts, for use at Harvard College. It is still there today, on its original granite base. It has the characteristic Fraunhofer mount, although the gravity clock has been replaced by an electric drive. It is over 20 feet long. It is occasionally used for astronomical observations even today. The telescope is so well balanced that it can easily be turned by hand. The aperture of the lens is 15 inches. Fraunhofer began by studying the dispersion of optical glass, which he had perfected himself. In the process, he discovered the dark lines in the spectrum of the sun. Soon, he was making the best optical lenses the world had ever seen. With this film, we honor the man who founded the scientific optical industry.